Hadouken! Welcome to the Now I'm Ashley. I'm Mika. Hey, we've got another crab fun and calamity on our hands. Uh, this time, accusations regarding sexual harassment, fraud, and the creator embezzling a million dollars in order to make a totally different game than the one they kickstarted in the first place. So, oh. yeah. Yeah, strap in. This one gets pretty wild. But hey, that's what Kickstarter's for, am I it, right? It is kind of entertaining. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the game in question this time around is one of the highest profile games to ever grace Kickstarter, Project Phoenix, a squad-based RTS with some major AAA names behind it. But according to one developer associated with the project, it's a total scam Aww. and the game is officially dead and the Aww. money has gone elsewhere. Uh, this accusation comes from developer Tariq Lacey, who was hired to assist on PR and marketing for an upcoming strategy game, Tiny Metal, which was supposed to release yesterday uh, until a last minute delay pushed it out to December. And right alongside the announcement of that delay, Lacey decided to make an announcement of his own about Tiny Metal, that it was made using embezzled Kickstarter funds from Project Phoenix. All right, great. yeah, cool. Uh, if you're confused about how those dots connect, understandably, Lacey actually <laughs> explains it fairly well in an official post on the Project Phoenix Facebook page. Hmm. He wrote, two months after I was hired at Area 35, I had learned that the company funded this project by running a scam through Kickstarter. They gathered several famous creators and ran a campaign known as Project Phoenix, then used the million dollars received from the campaign to fund the Tiny Metal Project. He went on to say, here's how it happened. After they received the Kickstarter money for Project Phoenix, they subsequently shut down their original company, Creative Intelligence Arts, or CIA, not the CIA, you know, then used the same money to establish Area 35 and pay for staff, equipment, and an office to make Tiny Metal. So following that, he claimed that game director and CEO Hiroaka Yura asked him to deflect any accusations that this money was from anyone other than private investors. Lacey also wrote, he asked to be removed from all Project Phoenix matters so he wouldn't be implicated in these shady dealings. These super shady dealings. The post was quickly removed from the Facebook page, no what? surprise no. there. No, wow. <laughs> but it has survived thanks to the wonders of the internet. Obviously, none of these accusations of embezzling Kickstarter money look too great for company CEO Yura. And, Understandably. And he responded with some accusations of his own, namely that Lacey is guilty of sexual harassment because if... You get one accusation, just throw another one back. All right, so uh, Yura sent a statement to Kotaku about his accuser writing, the post was posted by a staff whose contract has been bought out due to him being a toxic employee who has sexually harassed our female staff amongst many other problems. Yura added that there are three witnesses to these accounts and then went on to say, this post is factually incorrect and thus was deleted from our account. That's all we have to say for now. We're looking into releasing legal documents and other proofs after discussing this with our lawyer. As for the the actual accusations themselves and where the money for Tiny Metal came from, Yura says there's an explanation for that. According to him, the money came from Australian investors, some of his own money, and a deal with Sony Music Entertainment. But those explanations might not be enough to calm the objections of fans and backers who have taken issue with Project Phoenix for several years. The Kickstarter campaign for the title launched all the way back in the ancient times of April 2013. Hey! <laughs> At the time, <laughs> it was billed as a Japanese indie RPG featuring AAA talent. That AAA talent included director-producer Hiroaki Yura, who worked on Diablo 3 and Valkyria Chronicles, so that's pretty awesome. Game designer Vaughn Smith of LA Noir, a lead composer Nobu Uematsu from Final Fantasy and, well, everything, everything. Yeah. Uh, and a number of other designers and artists and modelers who worked on Halo 4, the Final Fantasy series, the Lord of the Rings movie trilogy, even singer Donna Burke of Metal Gear Solid 5 Phantom Pain. So that's a lot of talent. Yeah, it had quite the pedigree attached to it, which is probably why it gained such enthusiasm online and a lot of money. In total, it raised more than 1,014,000 from more than 15,000 backers, with pledge tiers ranging all the way up to $10,000. For that one, you get to design one of the game's hidden bosses, so that's kind of cool. Well, the boss is super hidden now, because uh, <laughs> the game still hasn't come out, and I don't know, it might not ever, if these allegations are to be believed. But fans have had plenty of reasons to doubt that enough already. In December of 2015, more than two years after the initial funding, they announced an almost three Three year delay into 2018 before the game could even go into testing. It's a big delay. Yeah. Uh, and earlier this year, they announced that the other game mentioned in the allegations, Tiny Metal, would be releasing ahead of the launch of Project Phoenix. They hmm. even released a beta of Tiny Metal for free to Project Phoenix backers. You actually might have heard of Tiny Metal before, in part because it's often compared to Advance Wars and its playstyle. Yeah, we saw a little bit of it at a Nintendo Direct, I think. Mm -hmm. But also because it was the game at the center of Sony Music Entertainment's deal to publish games on the Nintendo Switch. So 
sort of gets us up to speed here. Uh, that's weird. It's a, it's a sort of weird convoluted path, but here we are. <laughs> Naturally, Lacey has fired back at these responses from the game director, Yura. Lacey said in an email to Kotaku, no Hiroaki statement about me being toxic and sexually harassing a staff member is not true. He is reacting to my statement with libel. So yeah, this one escalated quickly. Yeah. Cause now we're talking about libel, lawyers, all kinds of fun stuff, which Oddly enough, doesn't even make this the weirdest Kickstarter disaster ever recorded. <laughs> Definitely not the first RPG to end in a big old dumpster fire, so at least you've got company. <laughs> there was also the RPG Unsung Story, which unfortunately followed a very similar trajectory to what we've seen here with Project Phoenix. That game was going to be built with some top RPG talent, Yatsumi Matsuno of Final Fantasy Tactics fame, and raise more than 660,000 from 15,000 backers. Now, after three years of development, multiple delays, total silence from the developers concerning gameplay videos, and a shift to multiplayer, the original developer, Playdeck, announced, yeah, we're not gonna be able to make this game anymore. What? Yeah, remember, the development was then taken over by company Little Orbit, who then announced that despite fans already waiting for three years, they were basically gonna have to start developing the game over from scratch. That sounds Sounds like lots of fun. Yeah. Unfortunately for Kickstarter and crowdfund games in general, this particular method of publishing games tends to get a bad rap, even though the majority of projects do end in the success. According to an independent study, the number is as high as 91% in terms of games that are actually successfully completed and released to their backers. The problem is though, it tends to be these really high profile, big money games that go down in flames. And so they get a lot of attention. A quick glance at the most funded game projects on Kickstarter doesn't speak too well to the idea that the more money a game gets, the better the results. Uh, yeah. There's like Star Citizen, which has all the money in the world and there are pieces of it out and it looks like it's gonna be really, really great when it's finally fully released, but it seems like it's still a long way off and it's, it was, they crowdfunded it years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, Shroud of the Avatar, uh, the Ouya. Oh my God. Uh, you know, Shenmue 3, which we don't know what's gonna happen with that now since the creator was like, yeah, we'd need so much more to make it real good. Uh, Bloodstained, Mighty Number no. 9, projects that have been in development for years or, or, did release, but very little fanfare, poor, poor reception. However, there are a few very successful and released projects that in that list as well, which is worth noting. It seems that many of these large titles are affected by some of these same problems. Feature creep and perhaps some uncertainty among project leads about how to scale once the project increases in scope. So it doesn't necessarily mean that Kickstarter and crowdfunded games are more likely to lead to this type of issue, but rather the more money there is to deal with, the more spectacular it's going to be when it all blows up. If. If it all blows up, which we've seen quite a few times by now. Uh, we, we, we have, yes. Uh, the, that being said, Project Phoenix's fate is still unwritten. They have yet to miss the release date of 2018 that they <gasps> promised back in 2015. So there's that, and we'll just have to wait and see how the game's development fares once next year rolls around. I wonder, so this is purely speculation. Mm -hmm. This is not based in fact, but I just wonder if maybe they, like overstepped or it creeped a little bit too much and they weren't gonna be able to make the game for what they said they were gonna make it for. So now they're gonna release Tiny Metal and try and use the funds and the revenue from that to restart development of Project Phoenix. It's kind of like uh, what Broken Age did with, with Double Fine where it got way more money than they expected. And so they were like, great, we'll design a more ambitious game. And then they got too ambitious and then they had to break it into two pieces and fund part two development with part one's revenue. I like to call this Schrodinger's dumpster fire. Is it a dumpster fire or is it not? We're not sure yet. We'll find out. So what do you guys think of all these wild accusations surrounding Project Phoenix? Will it rise from the ashes? Oh my God, I hate that Phoenix pun. Let us know in the comments. I like the Phoenix pun. <laughs> and for future updates on the latest crowdfunding shenanigans, remember to like this video. If you're new around here, subscribe to The Note. Eddie, keep those puns coming. No, Eddie, no. Good Eddie. Welcome to The Know, I'm Ashley. I'm Mika. Hey, we've got another crowdfunding calamity on our hands. <laughs> this time with regards to acquisitions. That did not work out. I was gonna say acquisitions and yeah, everything. You know acquisitions. It's fine. The game in question this time is around 